Thank, thank you. you so much, Thomas, and thank you so much, Hayid, for the kind invitation. And it's my pleasure to be here in Stockholm, actually, because uh, I studied also for my master, like uh, last time it was 2003, so it's like uh, six, 15 years that uh, uh, I, I was here in, in Sweden. So it's my pleasure just to present to give a highlight about what we do in, uh, in uh, EXO, the organization where indeed like uh, uh, RISE 6 is a member, likewise Ericsson and also Vinova uh, is a member of EXO. Uh, I'm gonna skip some slides just for the sake of timing, but uh, they are gonna be posted uh, online. So, and then uh, I believe so, so you are welcome to contact me for further details about some aspects. So just to give a little bit of uh, history, why we're talking about uh, EXO. So, Two years and a half ago, uh, there has been created like uh, a contractual public par partnership with the European Commission on cybersecurity. And the uh, objective is, uh, was clearly to foster cooperation between the public and the private investment uh, in Europe uh, to also stimulate uh, cybersecurity industry in Europe itself. And uh, in particular, also try to coordinate uh, the resources uh, so far. So the clear objective is really to strengthen the European ecosystem and uh, to have like Europe uh, as a major player uh, in, in the world. So what, uh, uh, what that means? Uh, it means that uh, the European Commission committed to invest uh, at the beginning 450 million, now more than 500 million in uh, Horizon 2020 projects. So you have like the calls, the cybersecurity PPP calls uh, that, uh, that span the period from 2017 to 2020. So the objective is that uh, the, um, the private sector will invest three times uh, that amount. Uh, and actually for the, the monitoring that we performed for the period 2016, 2017, actually the, the private sector is investing uh, way more than that. So we talk like a factor of uh, five, six uh, in terms of investment. That means that cybersecurity is really a growing market and very important market. So EXO was created at that time just uh, as a counterpart uh, with, uh, with respect to the European Commission. Uh, what I would like to mention is that uh, on top of uh, uh, looking at uh, the research priorities uh, for the future from, uh, let's say, the private sector, uh, EXO focuses on what we call industrial policy, in particular all the aspects related to certification, market development, uh, vertical sector. There was a presentation about the transport before, smart cities uh, clearly, but also uh, healthcare, yield, and government, and so on. So, and uh, the idea is to really to have a comprehensive uh, cybersecurity strategy to sustain the digital single market. With respect to that, so we have a broad number of stakeholders inside EXO, and we have also national public administrations. Why? Because cybersecurity has been seen like, uh, since the beginning, as mainly a national prerogative. And uh, nowadays, so there is like this cooperation between the public and the private sector that needs to be pushed further. And for us, it's important to have them as a part of the association because uh, they give us a, a feedback, uh, but also they uh, contribute to our activities. So um, what we achieved like in, uh, in the past two years, so this is just a snapshot uh, at, uh, um, with some details later. So clearly we grow up from, in terms of members, so we, went from 132 members, funding members, to 246 uh, uh, right now. Uh, so we establish all the different uh, governing bodies. But what I would like to stress is the list of uh, cooperation that we had managed to establish at European uh, level. So cooperation about different, uh, different levels, like with European Parliament, the Council, uh, and also with the, all the different uh, DGs. And uh, in addition to that, we have uh, established contacts with a number of uh, agencies like uh, ENISA, Europol, uh, also European Defense Agency, Frontex, and so on. So why this is important? Uh, this is an indication that cybersecurity is now a global issue. So it doesn't really affect the classical, let's say, networking, software, and, uh, and the system, uh, and so on. So, but it really tackles uh, aspects that are uh, prerogative of, for instance, DG move related to the transport. Uh, DG Energy, the keynote speaker this morning, mentioned like several attacks with respect to the energy infrastructure. So it's important clearly to establish all these dialogues uh, such that you know, we can have a comprehensive approach. And uh, for us, it's very important also to create new opportunities for our members, uh, but also for the research and industrial community in Europe uh, to access different sources of funding that are available. 
So in terms of uh, uh, working group activities, uh, so as I mentioned, uh, we, we tackle not only the research and the innovation priorities, but we look also at the industrial policy. And with respect to that, we had the, the, the first five working groups that look into that perspective. And in particular, working group one that myself am supporting uh, focus on aspects related to certification. So you might have heard that like in 2017, in September, uh, there was the regulation uh, with respect to the NISA and Cybersecurity Act uh, with respect to certification, establishing European certification framework. Uh, this is an important step because it will have a huge impact uh, on the market. Uh, so in terms of activities, we push like, well, we, we, we work on a meta scheme approach that is more an abstract level that has been used also by the council and also in the, in the discussion just to, uh, to reach an agreement, uh, which uh, now, nowadays the situation is that the Cybersecurity Act is at the trilogue phase and uh, most likely will be finalized by the end of the year, but there are still some issues there, so it might go to the Romanian presidency. So with respect to the another working group too that we focus more on the market development, uh, so we have there develop a market rather that to identify in particular the competencies uh, uh, available for the SMEs organization, uh, uh, large also companies uh, and different products. The idea is to look <coughs> at uh, different schemes for access to funding. Uh, so we run a, a certain number of meetings, especially with investors, uh, also to create these, uh, uh, um, what we call like cybersecurity market. Uh, working group three, focus on the different vertical sectors. So there is a number of technical reports I have referenced later. Working group four, we have here in particular, I would like to stress the SME app concept uh, to clearly support uh, SMEs uh, entering the market. And then, there is working group five that focus on, uh, on uh, all aspects related to awareness, uh, but also cyber ranges that were presented uh, uh, before. And, uh, and it was created a, netto a network like uh, a European uh, Human Resources for Cyber, and uh, that uh, is quite, uh, is quite uh, active in identifying the different skills. And then the working group six, that is uh, clearly the PPP part with the commission, uh, uh, managed to identify important priorities uh, uh, for the future. So what I'm gonna, uh, it's a bit slow, so this one I'm gonna skip. So this is, uh, yeah, just this gives a snapshot of uh, our organization. So we have like around 70 uh, large companies, but also end users, uh, and uh, we have public administration. So not all the European public administration, but uh, uh, in terms of full members, but th they are also part of uh, our committee as uh, observers with, res with respect to the, wor the work that we do. And Vinova is, uh, is one of them. We have also regions uh, that are members of EXO and uh, RTOs uh, like uh, RISE, also universities, uh, and uh, SMEs is like 25% uh, uh, of our members because they are the innovative part uh, in EXO. So these are just some numbers that I will skip and uh, I'll go directly on to this slide just to give a little bit of what is happening at the European level in the, in the political uh, um, uh, regulatory more framework. Uh, so clearly cybersecurity is reaching uh, more and more attention in the last years. Uh, so in particular, starting from the digital single market 2014 where cybersecurity is one of the pillars. Uh, 2016, there was a communication with respect to the creation of EXO and then we see every year important uh, uh, milestones uh, for uh, the cybersecurity and uh, actually how the ecosystem, European ecosystem will evolve uh, in the future. So 2017, I already mentioned this joint communication with respect to the new mandate of ENISA that is the European Agency Security, but also the Cybersecurity Act. And then 2018, there has been like the transposition of the NIS directive for what concerns all the critical infrastructure and the national level, and uh, also the application of GDPR. And then recently in September, there's been like a regulation for establishing uh, these uh, European cybersecurity, let's say research competence center, and this network of national coordination center. This is very fresh, so the discussion at the parliament and the council so are starting now and uh, is important to follow. Uh, however, what we are going to see in the, in the next uh, years, and then in terms of EXO, we are really preparing and working on for that with our members, uh, is the next multi-financial annual framework uh, where actually cybersecurity 
as uh, an important, uh, uh, important component. Uh, that is the Digital European Program, Horizon Europe. So we're already working on short-term priorities can be submitted for 2021 for the calls there. And uh, clearly that we expect an evolution of our PPP. So I would like just to focus a little bit of uh, also taking some information that uh, uh, has been said before. So the first uh, uh, important thing that we see is that uh, cybersecurity now is, uh, is growing uh, in terms of uh, also uh, mm, interest uh, in Europe at different levels. Uh, so if you look at the political level, so clearly governments are in very much interested in cybersecurity because of the election. So we are seeing like uh, the election in US that have been like somehow uh, there were some issues there. In Europe, we are going to have election in May and uh, uh, there is a fear that is gonna be interference also in the, in the political process and democratic process. So in terms of uh, society, citizens are very much uh, impacted by the decisions uh, and then by all the different attacks that undermine like the privacy of the citizen but also the type of service that they're gathering. There was a presentation before by the city of Solna. So we consider that uh, as a citizen, my only, let's say, counterpart to gather the services is the government. Uh, I'm kind of forced to get the services from the government. So it's important also that the citizens are protected. Uh, so all the aspects related to the privacy, to the way that the quality of services are provided, and so on. And clearly, in terms of uh, economy, with all the we look at the uh, digitalization of the industry, not only industry for the zero, but if we imagine, imagine that all the different services like uh, uh, energy, transport, uh, or uh, um, government uh, are very much interconnected now, so we are facing like cybersecurity attacks there. Uh, so cybersecurity is very much a global issue, so we need to look also at uh, what happens in third, part, third countries, uh, so this is important. I already mentioned uh, all the aspects related to digitalization and uh, with the massive usage of Internet of Things, industrial Internet of Things. There have been like some presentations before about how, uh, IoT and clearly how IoT is uh, impacting not only the consumers in terms of personal devices, but also the industry. And then there is this convergence between uh, IT and OT. So we need to look at uh, how uh, in particular like uh, uh, the operations are impacted uh, by the integration with, uh, with IT. So these are important, uh, important issues. So, and then later I would like just to, to, um, to mention just uh, two things. The important thing is related to the risk management that is still a challenge and this is an impact also to determine what is the real risk because threats are evolving very, very fast. Uh, and also the awareness uh, is still limited. Uh, and this is an implication for the figure of the, for the really of the, of the sizes in terms of inside the companies, because in some companies, the CISO can talk directly to the CEO, but uh, also it needs to justify why should be an investment uh, in cybersecurity. And this is clear until there is no attack, uh, sorry, un until there will be an attack, because then uh, there's gonna be really an impact that uh, the CEO can see in terms of uh, economy. So we came up with the definition of, uh, of cybersecurity that is more related to the vision that we'd like to achieve for 2027. And uh, we see like uh, European cybersecurity more as uh, our common science, knowledge, trustworthy processes, products, services, and infrastructure that we need to protect uh, because we need to protect our nations, uh, the industry economies, uh, and also uh, citizens, and so on. So there are a number of uh, issues uh, that we need to tackle clearly. And uh, what I would like to, to stress that, that in Europe, we tend to really push like to have Europe as a global leader in, uh, in uh, cybersecurity. And uh, so to reach also that autonomy also from uh, third parties, more in mastering the technologies and knowing what actually we are using. We don't need to reinvent the wheel, but we need to be able to master the technology in, in the proper way. So I'm, I'm gonna provide some details about our working group. So I start with the one related to the certification. It's uh, clearly a hot topic. So we started like two years ago. We ask our members uh, to identify what are the challenges that the industry needs to face with respect to the usage of certification schemes, but also standards uh, 
and uh, what are the implications also for the market. Uh, so it came clear that uh, we really need to have a minimum security baseline. We need to have uh, certain harmonization in Europe, uh, in particular when we talk about uh, security requirements uh, and uh, protection profiles uh, and so on. And it's important uh, to not reinvent new scheme or to not uh, reinvent new uh, standards, but to try to use as much as we can what is currently existing. One of the big issues for companies is the minimize the time to market. Uh, and this is, uh, is a key because the certification process can take a long time, can take also you know, more than a year. And if you want to have an innovation that needs to be uh, fast, uh, so we need to have a way to reduce the time to market. Uh, and uh, other issues are related to the security strengths of the item, but also to propose some uh, lean reassessment. Uh, uh, I think that uh, the CD project mentioned like the security updates. Uh, so clearly when we do an update, we change the way that the system or a component is gonna work. Uh, so we need to reassess it, reevaluate the, si the, the entire system. This has an impact, so that means that we might need to reassess in every certified. So this is, uh, can be uh, a big problem. And uh, threat analysis and risk assessment, that should be the source to determine uh, the security requirements. So we came up also with uh, a document that is public that is a syllabus with all the certification scheme and standards that are available. So this document uh, encompasses like uh, uh, products, uh, uh, software, uh, but also organizations and professionals. Uh, and uh, also then the key one is the meta scheme approach that uh, uh, it's, uh, the objective is really to foster trust by defining some transparent rules. These documents uh, are public available. And in particular, the meta scheme approach was very much used uh, in a recent discussion for the Cybersecurity Act. What I would like to draw the attention here, I mean, some of them I, I said, uh, but that uh, um, among those, I would like to stress the, uh, clearly that uh, the scope of certification needs to address the entire supply chain. Before in the previous talk, there was like uh, the issues of uh, where we get our, let's say, uh, services in terms of software, but also in components. So it needs to address uh, all the supply chain and also ethical hacking uh, should be also allowed uh, to enforce security. This was also mentioned for the cyber ranges talk. I mean, eth eth ethical hacking uh, a way to do that. So uh, the, the meta scheme approach, we are working on it now. We are more going into the ty different type of evaluation and assessment. Uh, and we are very much in cooperation with ENISA for respect to this work. Uh, and we are going to move to the verticals. In particular, we are gonna start a pilot with the Joint Research Center. So we need to define some details there about SCADA and industrial control system to see how things need to work in practice. So with respect to the working group two, that is the one related to the market. Uh, so there is uh, the radar that uh, has been uh, uh, defined. Uh, and in particular, there are different events for uh, access to the market. Uh, and uh, there is uh, a initial paper related to the private investment in innovative business model that should come out uh, uh, soon and is going to be available on our website. What I would like to stress here, just to provide a little bit more information about, uh, about the radar, so you might see like uh, the NIST, uh, th the NIST, uh, let's say, uh, protect, detect, respond, recovery, well, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recovery. And uh, so there's been also developed a taxonomy in this working group that has been used uh, for uh, clearly put, uh, ask, uh, companies, uh, any type of organization, to place their product in, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on the radar. So this is uh, really uh, a way also to help uh, the different stakeholders uh, to, uh, to identify the right, uh, uh, the right products. So, and this is public available. There is a document also that uh, you can look at on our website with some details about that. With respect to the working group three, that is the one related to the verticals, uh, we work on different, uh, we have eight vertical sectors, uh, and uh, another, I mean, like uh, industry 4.0, energy, transport, finance, that is very much uh, advanced, public administration, smart cities, and telecom, and, uh, and so on. So we publish some uh, sector reports, and in particular, we 
look into the, into the different uh, key issues uh, and uh, that each kind of uh, vertical uh, um, needs, to, needs to face. So we try to derive some of the challenges uh, that the verticals uh, needs to face, and in particular the needs that needs to be addressed by both research, but also the market, certification, and so on. So we created like an operational U platform for user. So the idea is to have a kind of harmonization also for the incident reporting. One big issue is to have like parties to collaborate. R right now, for instance, reporting is much easier that the private sector among themselves, they talk to each other because of trust relationship that have been established in the past. So we need to have also collaboration between the private and the public sector because right now the needs clearly we need to report potential attacks and so on. I, I have only one minute left, so I'll try to go fast <laughs> and uh, because these slides are, and these are the reports that are available on our website. In terms of working group four, I would like just to highlight this uh, uh, SM, SME app concept, uh, and in particular, well, it's possible to look to position like different cybersecurity companies, uh, SMEs, uh, on uh, this, uh, this quadrant, uh, and uh, the idea is to have a kind of U label uh, to uh, also promote uh, the, the work of these uh, of the, the the product of the, of the SMEs. And then there is a project related to the different uh, uh, regions so because the idea is to have uh, a comprehensive approach from the local, um, local organization that are very close to the SMEs regions um, and then move to the national level with the national strategies and European level. So I would like just to uh, stress maybe one thing about uh, this working group about uh, um, education, training and awareness uh, and the top part so we have a range of uh, cyber ranges workshop that we have with the European Defense Agency. And uh, there's gonna be one in uh, Tallinn to be planned, another one in autumn 2019. And uh, this is important because uh, as it was highlighted in the previous talk uh, from Norway, so it's important to train the, for the, the, the forces and clearly to have people with the right skills that are placed on the, on the market. Uh, and uh, the idea to combine it with the European Defense Agency is because there are many similarities in terms of cybersecurity for the civil sector and for the defense. Clearly the scope is different, but uh, there are common backgrounds with respect to that. And uh, there are also papers out with respect to skilled job, professional training, uh, and also we created uh, a network uh, that is Women for Cyber because there is a, a and uh, lack of uh, uh, women so far in, uh, in uh, cybersecurity, so it's uh, also a way to, uh, to uh, have a contribution from all. And the last point that I'd like to mention, it's about what we do in Working Group 6, in particular, Rice uh, and Shahid, it's uh, uh, participate also to the last meetings where we at. So the first part is uh, our strategic research innovation agenda that is uh, out, is available, you can look at. So what we are doing now, we are identifying like uh, uh, the needs for the different vertical sectors, but also looking at short-term priorities. Uh, uh, there's been like, there is a lot of uh, uh, interest in Internet of Things technology, artificial intelligence, and blockchain. People uh, are talking about blockchain, but maybe few people know how to use it, so we try to identify the cybersecurity challenges there. And we collaborate also with other PPPs. Uh, it was mentioned 5G, Industrial Association, most of you are familiar. We are signing also a memorandum of understanding with, uh, with 5G. And uh, we have a collaboration also we here with European Defense Agency. There is a working group, uh, a SAR working group starting uh, to work on that. And uh, well, in terms of collaboration, we also have an MOU with Sensenelec for the standards that I forgot to mention before. And this concludes my talk and I will leave the slides uh, later and happy to take the questions, that any question that you might have. Thank you.